let's now turn our attention to how commodities futures are priced. The approach has to be somewhat different from the valuation of stock or bond futures as commodities are physical assets with no cash flows. Besides, physical assets may incur storage and transportation costs. A futures contract for a commodity is an obligation to the long to buy a stated quantity of the commodity at a stated price on a specified date in the future. The short is obliged to sell according to these terms. The difference between the spot price and the futures price is referred to as the basis of that particular contract. For example, if spot gold is $2,000 per ounce and one-year futures price of gold is $2,050, the basis for one-year gold futures is minus $50. The difference between the futures price of a nearer maturity and the futures price of a more distant maturity is known as the calendar spread. So, if three months gold futures is $2,010, the calendar spread between three months and one year gold is minus $40. Be very careful with the signs when calculating basis or calendar spreads. They can be positive or negative. In such a case where the futures curve is upward sloping, the futures market is said to be in contango. In a contango market, the calendar spread and basis of futures contracts are negative. Conversely, if futures prices are lower at dates further in the future, the market is said to be in backwardation and the basis and calendar spreads are positive. Herein comes the question. What are the factors that explain why some futures markets are in contango while others are in backwardation? There are three theories that seek to explain this. First, the insurance theory argues that commodity producers face uncertainty about the price they will receive for their future output, so they'll want to reduce this uncertainty by selling futures contracts. This selling drives down futures prices. The futures prices will be less than current spot prices to provide a return to speculators buying futures from producers. In this view, the resulting positive return to the speculators is their return for providing insurance to the producers against price uncertainty. This results in backwardation, normally, which is why the insurance theory is also known as the normal backwardation theory. However, this theory was found to be lacking based on empirical evidence. Firstly, buying futures has not resulted in extra returns for the buyers providing insurance. Secondly, Many commodity markets are not in backwardation but are in contango, which would imply a negative return for providing insurance to producers. To better explain this, the hedging pressure hypothesis added the hedging behaviour of commodity users. While a producer faces uncertainty about the price at which he will sell his produce in the future, a user of the commodity will also face uncertainty about the price it will pay in the future. To hedge its price risk, the user will buy futures. So, as you can see, there are two opposing hedging forces under the hedging pressure hypothesis. When producers' hedging behaviour dominates, the market will be in backwardation. And when the user's hedging behaviour dominates, the market will be in contango. Despite the intuitiveness, this theory has some shortcomings. Producers typically face more concentrated price risk than users. That is, the producer's profits are much more affected by a single commodity price than the user. This means that producers have much more motivation to hedge than for the users. To further complicate things, both producers and users may be speculators in the market, not just hedgers. Another problem with the hedging pressure hypothesis is that hedging pressure is not observable, so we cannot directly test the hypothesis that relative hedging pressure is the cause of backwardation and contango. The theory of storage is based on the fact that the short holds on to the physical inventory of the commodity over the length of the futures contract. Because the short bears the cost of storage, the long should compensate the short by paying a higher futures price. However, there could be benefits to the long in holding the commodity, so the long should be compensated for foregoing the benefits by paying a lower price. When the costs of storage outweigh the benefits of holding physical inventory, 
current possession is less attractive than future possession. Futures will trade at a higher price than spot, and the market will be in contango. Conversely, when the benefits of holding physical inventory outweigh the costs of storage, current possession is more attractive than future possession, spot prices are higher than future prices, and the market will be in backwardation. The benefits of having physical inventory available are referred to as a commodity's convenience yield. The convenience yield is often higher when physical stocks in the market are low and if the commodity will likely be in short supply. In such cases, it'll be more beneficial to have physical stock. So, based on the theory of storage, the futures price is the current spot price plus the storage costs minus the convenience yield. The shortcoming of this approach, however, is that convenience yield, like hedging pressure, is not observable. Storage costs are also often unknown, as they're not readily disclosed by participant firms. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At PrepNuggets, let us do the hard work for you.